In Escape from Tarkov, there are usually a handful of things we always bring into every raid. When building a kit, you likely typically make sure you have a gun, spare mags and ammo, meds, armor, headphones, but what about a helmet? For new players, you might be under the impression that you should never even enter a raid without a helmet. Over some time, the mentality may switch over to helmets being useless and that you should never wear one. Or maybe you believe helmets are more useful on some maps than others. Whatever it may be, it seems like helmets are the one component of a gear set that players typically don't agree on. So today, we're going to put them to the test. Are helmets actually worth using in EFT? Before we get into it, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash johnnybusak or on TikTok under the same name. If you watched my video on face shield effectiveness, you already know mostly how this test is going to be executed, but there will be slight differences. We'll be testing 7 different helmets, one for each armor tier, plus an extra at level 4. The helmets tested will be the fast replica with a high ricochet chance at tier 1 armor, the coal pack with a low ricochet chance at tier 2, the SSH-68 with a high ricochet chance at tier 3, the ZSH with a medium ricochet chance at tier 4, the ULAC with a high ricochet chance also at tier 4, the Alton high ricochet chance at tier 5, and the Vulcan with a high ricochet chance at tier 6. Since most helmets in the game have a high ricochet chance, I included the two tier 4 helmets to test the difference between medium and high. While this isn't necessarily a video to test ricochets, I do want them to still be acknowledged and considered as a contributor to our results. I also felt like two tier 4s made sense, as tier 4 helmets seem to be the most commonly worn in game. I'm not expecting too much from the tier 1 and 2 helmets, but it's only fair to include them. Each helmet will be tested against some of the most commonly used rounds in the game. The rounds that will be tested are as follows. 556, M856A1, and M855A1, 545, BT, and BS, 762, PS, and BP, 308, M80, and M61, and 45, ACP, FMJ, and AP. Each helmet will be tested against each round twice, and rounds will be shot at a distance of 25 meters. Shots will be aimed at the top of head hitbox for every helmet for further consistency, since not all helmets cover the same surrounding areas. The angle of impact for each shot will be kept consistent across each test, so the chance of a ricochet occurring doesn't fluctuate. No healing will take place between shots, as we want to test how many consistent shots you'd survive with that particular helmet not how long it would take to destroy the helmet. While this testing method isn't perfect, it still will consist of 140 different tests, which is more than enough to at least formulate a better opinion on the topic. But with that all out of the way, let's get to the testing.
So, let's go over the results. Starting with the fast replica, I wasn't really expecting much at all, but I also wasn't expecting it to not survive even a single 45 FMJ round. While we didn't test any very low pen rounds, I would have expected to be surprised at least somewhere throughout the test. But there were no surprises, so it seems that cheap tier 1 helmets are only good as cosmetics for scavs. Up at tier 2, we had the Colpack, another scav favorite, which again, didn't survive a single bullet. This helmet has always been a meme more than anything as it restricts your hearing, provides little protection, and has a low ricochet chance. Typically, beginners realize after their first day of playing how ineffective this helmet is, and this was only further solidified in our testing today. 
Up at tier 3, I was actually surprised how poorly the SSH performed. This seems to be the helmet that everyone swears by at the beginning of wipes, and while it does seem to do well against scav rounds from my personal experience, it didn't provide much protection against any of the common rounds we tested today. That being said, it did survive three rounds for 45 FMJ, an extremely common low-level round. With that in consideration, it still seems it may be viable early wipe when umps with FMJ are being used left and right. At tier 4, we had both the ULAC and ZSH. The ULAC, on average, performed slightly better than the ZSH, perhaps due to its slightly higher maximum durability. Neither helmet lasted a single shot of the higher pen variants of any caliber, minus one of the ULACs lasting an extra shot of 45 AP. For the lower pen rounds, the helmets lasted 2-3 to three rounds on average, outside of 45 FMJ, of course. With the Alton at Tier 5, we saw it take 2-5 to five low pen rounds and 1-2 to two high pen rounds to kill at most calibers. I was personally surprised that it lasted 3-4 to four shots of 45 AP, a round I was expecting to get the kill in one to two shots. Lastly, at tier six, we had the Vulcan, which was a tank with nearly every round tested. It consistently took nearly 10 of the lower pen rounds to kill at each caliber, and was even able to survive three to four rounds of 7.62 BP. It did not survive a single round of M61 though. I had expected M61 to be the quickest killer for every helmet tested, but I didn't expect it to consistently one tap through a tier six Vulcan. But that leaves the question, are helmets in EFT worth using? It's pretty much widely agreed upon that tier 3 and under helmets exist to save you from a shot or two from a scav, especially since 7.62 PS and 45 FMJ are both available so early in the game. They clearly won't do much against players, aside from the SSH, which has some slight potential. But investing in a helmet like that every raid when you only have a couple hundred thousand rubles may not really be worth the money. Tier 4 helmets do their job, giving you a much higher chance of surviving most lower pent rounds. Of course, in a more realistic scenario, you'd probably only get shot in the head once before realizing you need to reposition to cover. So if a helmet consistently keeps you alive for an extra shot, I'd say it's worth the cost. Paying up for a helmet to keep you alive slightly longer is better than having to pay for an entire kit. When it comes to tier 5, I'd say the Alton is always worth using, as long as you're comfortable with the hearing restrictions. Some people can't bear the restricted hearing, and some are just fine with it. Because it provides such high survivability, I'd say it's worth running in the majority of situations. The only time I would say it's really a toss-up is when playing labs, as most players will be running their highest pen ammo there every single raid, and there's an equal chance of getting one tap that there is surviving a single shot. Being that an Alton can cost around the same price as the labs card itself, doubling your entry fee each raid doesn't really seem like the best financial decision. But when you consider maps like Customs where there's such a large variety of weapons and rounds used, the price for survival doesn't seem so bad. When talking about the Vulcan, the price of the helmet itself is pretty much the same as an Alton nowadays, but the face shield price changes heavily due to the fluctuating prices of plexiglass for the barter. Considering that the helmet has many penalties, and that the face shield is only tier 4 armor, I don't really believe the Vulcan has a place in the game currently. If the face shield was tier 5, it would be much more viable, but considering the majority of close range kills are due to a head eyes anyways, the Alton just seems much more well rounded. So, in closing, my opinion stands as this. If you're a low level or just learning the game, run your tier 3 helmets to help you get past scavs while you progress through the early game. For mid-level players, tier 4 helmets seem like a solid investment for most playstyles, as they'll protect you against scav rounds and lower pen rounds very consistently. It may be most worth it to you to set your limit here and not buy anything beyond a tier 4 helmet, as the price and performance balance seems to be most acceptable. But if you're willing to pay a little extra and are okay with the hearing restrictions, tier 5 performs well consistently, has great face shield potential and provides significantly better survivability than all the tiers below it. As for tier 6, the Vulcan seems to be more of something you'd run for fun currently. A great alternative is the Bastion helmet with a tier 6 plate attachment, which together will run you about the same price as the Vulcan with its face shield. It has much lower penalties, but doesn't cover the ear hitbox, is made of ceramic, and you're unable to attach a face shield. So if you're looking for tier 6, you're going to have to decide which characteristics hold more value to you. And that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully everything I showed you today helps you to better develop your own opinions on whether or not you should be buying helmets in EFT. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd love to extend the conversation. But thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.